Hey, what is going on? And welcome to the online cast and crew premiere of our submission to this year's Straight Eight Film Festival, The Caller. Thank you so much for joining us on this live broadcast. And uh, please mind my lockdown haircut. It's been a while. My name is Nick Hansbauer, and joining me tonight on the other side of the internet is none other than my co-producer and director of photography, Matthias Stryker. Hi and a warm welcome also from me. Uh, super glad to see you all here tonight for our own little premiere. Um, I'm super stoked to see the final picture we all made. As you know, uh, we shot it back in February of this year and due to COVID and the pandemic, we're only now getting to see the final product. There have been a lot of delays. Um, it was scheduled to be released earlier that got pushed back a, a month or so and yeah i'm just super stoked that that we're all here together tonight and that we can finally see what we all created now the premise of the straight eight film festival is for people to shoot a short film on a single roll of super eight millimeter film there are no edits allowed there is no cutting there are no redos essentially you put the film roll into the camera hit record and whatever comes out that is your film to top things off, you're not even allowed to see the film. You actually shoot it, wrap it, and send it over to London to get developed and judged by the jury. Now, other than the fact that Straight 8 brings filmmakers back to the roots of analog filmmaking, what I've always loved about this process is that it's less about creating the next cinematic masterpiece and that it's more about bringing people together in a community to create a collaborative work of art. In this way, Straight 8 is less of an actual commercial film festival and more of a celebration of analog film and storytelling that takes place once a year worldwide. Now in classic straight eight fashion, neither myself nor Matthias Stryker have even looked or previewed at the film we shot. We just received it over the weekend. We have not taken a peek. So this is also the world premiere, so to say, for us as well. For all we know, we might have overexposed or underexposed and we'd be sitting together watching three minutes of a blank roll of film. Hang tight. Seeing the film for the first time tonight, um, especially for me as the cinematographer, is quite nerve wracking, to be honest. Um, as Nick already said, neither him nor me have seen the movie before and it is our very first time watching it with you guys. Um, it is quite a challenge from a cinematography perspective as first of all, there is only one take on the roll of film. So if you fuck up the take, you basically have to start a new roll. And then there is the other thing with obviously film. Um, where you don't know exactly how it's gonna turn out. You don't have a chance to play back um, the most recent take and you really, yeah, stuck in a limbo in terms of how the final picture is going to look. We did use a digital camera on set to roughly guesstimate basically what our picture is going to look like in terms of lighting and color. Uh, but still, it is an analog medium um, it is a film stock and it will behave in its own way. So, as I said, super stoked to finally see um, how it turned out. And also whether or not the whole concept worked, because as some of you might remember, we had a little uh, fuck up at the end of our shoot where the film in our camera got actually stuck and we had to kind of open up um, uh, the Super 8 camera, kind of rewind it a little bit. Uh, tinker around in order to actually get it rolling on our very last take which basically well the last take defines whether or not the story of the whole film is going to work or not so um i think i can speak for everyone here that we are very excited to finally see whether or not um, that worked and how it worked now at this point i'd like to throw things over to janusz lasselsberger our lead talent for the caller He'll be able to give us some insights on what it was like working on a straight eight set. Again, no retakes. Things need to always be a one take wonder. We can't even preview the shots or see exactly what we're framing on the day. Janusz Lasselsberger. Naja, also die Arbeit für mich mit Nick Hansbauer. Um, ich komme eigentlich vom Theater. Ich mache sonst keinen Film. Das, irgendwie, das war nie so mein Medium, wo ich mich ausdrücken kann, habe ich das Gefühl gehabt. Und 
Es war mehr so ein Freundschaftsdienst, dann Nick und ich, wir kennen uns schon lange und ich habe gesagt, er hat gesagt, er braucht einen Schauspieler für seinen 8mm irgendwas Film drehen. Und er hat gesagt, ja, kann ich da, kann ich da schon machen, ja. Ähm, also von dem her, ich finde die ganze Worterei am Set, das ist, das ist mir einfach zu öd, gell? aber ansonsten hat eh passt. Also, ich meine, diese, dieses 8mm Film, es kommt mir insofern entgegen, als dass ich das gewohnt bin vom Theater, so du kannst proben, so viel du willst, aber am Ende dann wenn es heißt Stage Time, so, ne, dann das ist das, was zählt, was die Leute dann sehen. Ne? Also, um das geht es letztendlich. Und das war ja da irgendwie das Gleiche, dass wir da keine Möglichkeit gehabt haben, da mehrere Takes zu machen oder so ähnlich. Also es ist irgendwie, du musst dann abliefern, wenn es gefragt ist. Und ähm, ja, ich glaube, das Ergebnis spricht für sich. Also, ähm, ja, ich, ich möchte dazu nur sagen, dass... Ähm, die Story, das, das war mir irgendwie ein bisschen zu banal, irgendwie dieses, was war das, irgend so eine Gangster-Crime-Noir-Geschichte mit, keine Ahnung, und äh, was hat der Detective irgendwie noch umbracht, ich, keine Ahnung, ich habe es ja nie, hab's nie ganz gelesen, ich habe nur gesagt, ja, nix, sag, was brauchst du, und ich mach dir das schnell, und ähm, äh, genau, also da, da bin ich vom Theater eine andere Tiefe gewohnt normalerweise in der Auseinandersetzung mit ähm, auch gesellschaftlichen Themen. Also das, das war mir irgendwie zu banal, aber ich glaube trotzdem, man kann sich das gut anschauen. Also ich, ich habe mir noch, noch nicht gesehen, aber ich bin jetzt gespannt, was, was wie, wie geworden ist der Film. Und ähm, ich denke da an einen Kollegen von mir, äh, kennen es wahrscheinlich eh, der Christoph Walz, ähm, der, äh, der ist ja der Auffassung, äh, der sagt, na, es gibt keine guten Schauspieler, es gibt nur gute Rollen und schlechte Rollen, also so gut geschriebene Drehbücher und ähm, wenn die Rolle schlecht ist, sagt er, dann, dann kann er auch nichts machen, äh, dann, also die Rolle muss gut sein und dann, äh, muss der, dann, 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 dann kann er das gut spielen oder so, keine Ahnung. Also äh, ich bin der andere Auffassung, ähm, ist mir scheißegal, wie schlecht oder banal das geschrieben ist, äh, ich glaube, dass man, man, man merkt, dass das so eine hohe Handwerkskunst ist und ähm, dass ich was von meinem Handwerk verstehe und das Ergebnis, wie gesagt, spricht für sich. Ähm, das sieht man dem Film schon an. Also ich glaube eher, ähm, ich glaube eher, auch wenn die Rolle schlecht ist, du brauchst einfach eine gute, brauchst einen guten Cast. Ja. Und das ist ihm die Kanzbauer sicher gelungen, würde ich sagen. So mit dem, äh, wie gesagt, das war ein Freundschaftsdienst, aber äh, auch unentgeltlich. Aber ich habe das gern gemacht und äh, ja, freue mich jetzt aufs Anschauen. An often overlooked aspect of filmmaking in general is the post sound work. Uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce Luki, our sound designer, and I gotta give props to him for working on this project with us on a completely different level and with a completely different workflow. So the main problem with uh, straight A films basically, or films shot on Super 8, and, and any film, therefore, is the fact that you are not able to replay the footage, you can't review it, and there is no way for you to basically have an edit ready for the sound designer to work on. So what we did, um, we had Dominic basically simultaneously record the scenes on his iPhone as we were shooting them, and um, trying his best to mimic camera angle and focal length. And we then basically pieced together a digital edit in Premiere Pro consisting of the cell phone footage of Dominic so that we had a digital version of our Super 8 uh, film. Um, this digital version was then used by Luki to basically work the sound design off of and he'll tell you how that worked out for him. Hello, jetzt auch ein kleiner Einblick zur gesamten äh, Produktion von der Musik, von dem Ganzen. Ähm, wie man bei mir im Hintergrund schon sehen kann, bin ich normalerweise gewohnt, äh, in einem sehr technischen, digitalen ähm, und modernen, würde ich meinen, Umfeld zu arbeiten. Das Interessante dieses Mal war, dass es von Start to Finish eigentlich, ich würde es nicht sagen oldschool, aber doch sehr haptisch und sehr äh, klassisch äh, vonstatten ginge. Ähm, angefangen, dass es natürlich nicht auf einer SD-Karte gespeichert wurde, sondern eben auf äh, einer Filmrolle. Ähm, und um das Ganze zu matchen, habe ich mir überlegt, ähm, wäre es 
am besten, wenn die Produktion von der Musik auch so analog wie möglich wäre. Was darin geändert hat, dass ich ganz am Anfang eben diesen Jazz-Boogie-mäßigen Tune geschrieben habe, wo sich aber relativ schnell herausgestellt hat, dass es nichts bringt dazu, ähm, digital Drums zu programmieren, weil es ja nämlich im Endeffekt immer ein bisschen zu perfekt klingt, beziehungsweise zu strukturiert und einfach kein Feel da ist. Zumindest in dem Fall war es schwierig, deinen Feel reinzubekommen. Deswegen, was haben wir gemacht? Ich habe mich mit einem äh, alten Schulfreund zusammengesetzt, mit Max Meitz, äh, der ein absolut hochbegabter Instrumentalist ist und äh, eigentlich, ich weiß nicht, was er nicht kann. Er kann Gitarre spielen, Klavier spielen, singen, äh, you name it. Und ich weiß nicht, ob es jemand von euch kennt, das Kaffee Wolf in Graz. Ist auch ein sehr äh, alteingesessener Laden, also hat auch eigentlich super dazu passt. Und da haben wir dann äh, über das von mir eingespielte, einprogrammierte Klavier ähm, echte Drums aufgenommen. Und ich glaube, dass die dem Ganzen irgendwie den gewissen Twist geben und auch, dass die Drums das Hauptelement sind, äh, die quasi die Geschichte miterzählen. Also... Man merkt bei, bei diversen Stellen einfach, dass die Drums mehr oder weniger die Gedanken vielleicht sogar, jetzt, wenn man wenn so weit gehen will, äh, darstellen vom, äh, vom Schauspieler oder vom Charakter besser gesagt. Und das hat einfach unglaublich gut funktioniert, weil wir das nämlich auch mehr oder weniger blind aufgenommen haben. Es ist halt so, dass ich dem Max die, das, das Referenzvideo vom iPhone durchgeschickt habe. Der hat sich das natürlich ein paar Mal angeschaut. Die Aufnahme selbst war dann aber nicht so, wie man es vielleicht von manchen Making-of-DVDs kennt, irgendwie mit einer großen Leinwand im Hintergrund, äh, wo dann das Orchester dazu einspielt, mit äh, Kontakten und allem drum und dran. Sondern es war dann eben, waren dann eigentlich nur äh, wir zwei plus äh, ein paar helf helfende Elfen äh, im, im Café Wolf, die das Café Wolf eben zum Studio umgebaut haben. Lange Rede, kurzer Sinn. Ähm, es war dieses Mal, wie gesagt, ein sehr ähm, analoger Approach, äh, der, finde ich, nicht anders hätte sein dürfen äh, in Verbindung mit dem sehr analogen Projekt, im wahrsten Sinne des Wortes. Es äh, hat mir unglaublich viel Spaß gemacht, es hat Max unglaublich viel Spaß gemacht und ähm, genau, es ist cool, da ein Teil davon zu sein und auch gewesen sein zu dürfen. In diesem Sinne nochmal ähm, großes Shoutout an alle, die mitgemacht haben. Großes Danke an Aaron, Paul, Julian, Thomas, Max, Max and Dad. Alle, die das irgendwie möglich gemacht haben. Ähm, vor allem, ich weiß nicht, ob das jetzt vor dem Film oder nach dem Film abgespielt wird. Falls es vor dem Film abgespielt wird, abgespielt wird dann ähm, Film ab, enjoy. Und ähm, falls es danach abgespielt wird, ich glaube, jetzt haben wir nochmal die Bestätigung, dass es einfach richtig geil war. Now it goes without saying that we couldn't have done any of this without you guys. And I know even though it really just is a small project for the fun of it on a weekend, thank you so much for helping out, for lending your hands on set, and for just being a part of our Straight Aid community. Also thanks to Matthias Stryker for getting me involved in Straight Aid shooting. It's been a blast as always, man. Now, I know you guys are as eager as we are to finally see whatever the heck we shot that day. But before we begin, both Matthias and I would like to curate one other of the Straight Eight submissions that we personally enjoyed. On the one hand, to show you guys all the creativity that is possible with just a single roll of super eight millimeter film. And on the other hand, you know, because this is a three minute screening, so uh, we gotta fill the evening here somehow, you know? So without any further ado, Matthias, how about you start with your honorable mention? My honorable mention um, of 2021 is the short film AGAU. Um, what struck me most about the film was uh, the continuous flow of energy and how well the cuts work. As we all know, cutting in camera is one of the hardest aspects of the Straight 8 challenge. And this movie really made the most of it and just generally had the flow of the dancing people just going from cut to cut uh, without really distracting from the whole scene. Also, uh, there were some really, really nice compositions in the whole film and the locations were just stunning. So that is my honorable mention of 2021, AGAU. I think it was like the funnest day I had a year. It was such a challenge, obviously filming within the camera in that fashion, and we weren't actually allowed to be there.
Now, choosing an honorable mention myself amongst all the straight A films that have been produced up to date was not easy. There were films that were executed from an insanely high level of quality from a technical standpoint of view that wouldn't even be easy to produce in a regular digital or at least traditional approach to filmmaking with multiple takes, edits in post, etc., etc. So some of the things that have been produced in camera were absolutely amazing. Other films utilized such a high level of production design and even created some in-camera effects that to this day, neither myself nor Matthias are 100% sure how they pulled off, which also is incredible to see. But for this year's honorable mention from myself, I'm gonna have to go with Jamela, a submission from 2016 actually. Even though the script and the performance and the concept are very simple, there's nothing over the top going on, I feel just like the execution on a performance level is really on the mark. It always makes me giggle and I really like the little, uh, the little twist, the little reveal at the end, uh, which is just another clever touch. So my honorable mention, Jamela. Hi, yeah, this is Jamela. You know what to do. Just leave me a message and I'll get back to you. Bye. Um, hi, Jamela. Ah, uh, um, I know. I yeah, we're not talking to each other. Uh, that's fine. Um, I just it doesn't really count as talking to each other if I call you. So I was just going to say maybe I could call you and then just talk. Um, and, and then you say nothing. I, I, I love that. So give me a call if you're willing to do that. You could be the talker. I don't, I don't mind. Okay, all right, bye. Hey, um, just a quick one. Uh, when you left a few months ago, you left a bottle of water in the fridge. I just want to know whether it's cool for me to chuck that out. Um, or, you know, it would be kind of wasteful. I could just drink it. Um, uh, so, yeah, just let me know whether you want me to chuck it out or drink it. Um, cool. All right, cheers. Let me know. Hey, it's me again. Um, I have bought some flowers and I, I don't know what to do with them. Uh, if you have any need for flowers, um, I can give you the flowers. <laughs> um, so let me know if you want me to give you some flowers. Cheers. 
Hi, Jamila. Um, give me a call when you get this. Okay, bye. Hi. Um, uh, I'm not going to say it's... I'm enjoying you uh, ignoring these. The, op the opposite, in fact. Um, please give us kiss a bell, because I'm going a bit mad. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, bye. Yo, um, sorry about that last one. I'm not going mad. I just had too much um, bread, uh, and I was I was feeling low. Um, okay, bye. Hi, um, I was just uh, rooting through the loft and I found that painting of a parrot your little brother did. Um, it's so good. Just tell him. Just tell him I think it's really good. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, bye. Hi. Jamela, this is um, me again. Um, I'm just going to balls out, say it. Um, can we stop this and just be together again? Because this is, sh this is shit. And I think you know it's shit. Because there's no way I'm feeling the way I'm feeling and, 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 and you're not feeling that way. Um, or, may or maybe you, you aren't. Sorry. <sighs> but bye. Hey, I just got your messages... Uh, uh, I think we need to meet up and talk. Um, I'm free today. Okay, bye. Ah, so good to hear from you. So annoyed I missed your call. To an, I, I, you don't know how annoyed I am. But yes, I, I am up for meeting. Uh, let me I, today. It's fine. I, let me just slip a, a, a jumper on and I'll, and I'll be out. Okay, great. Bye. All right, uh, that's it from my end. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for, for being part of this project and being part of this journey, really, um, starting in February of this year and now coming to an end um, in November, over half a year later. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm, I'm looking forward to what we all created and I hope to see you all soon on some future Straight 8 projects. If you're interested in seeing more of these, I strongly recommend you check out Straight 8 on their socials or their websites to see more of the submissions from around the world. I promise you it'll be well worth it. Every year I am blown out of the water by the sheer brilliance and creativity captured by filmmakers from around the world. And quite frankly, it always kind of makes me depressed as it's a humble reminder that I'll never be a director as great as them. So that being said, friends and family, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Without further ado, we are going to roll the clip. We're gonna sit back ourselves and see whatever happened on that day for the very first time right now. Thank you so much once again, and feel free to join us on WhatsApp for the after party uh, <laughs> after this. Roll it. Are we rolling? Are we rolling? Jesus, where's my... Okay. And we have another late night caller joining us here at FM Fear, where we bring the thrills and chills straight to your ear. How about you go right ahead and share a story that left you chilled to the bone? I just gotten off the late night shift and I was on my way home 534 in the morning, April 4th. Now I noticed something was really fishy when I see Mrs. Parker's door jaw like that. And that's not like Mrs. Parker at all. She's one of them folk that keeps her windows closed, curtains drawn, and doors double bolted. I'm a good neighbor, you know, so I come walking up to see if everything's okay, right? I go to the door, and what do I see? Mrs. Parker, 82 years old, wouldn't hurt a damn fly, shot in cold blood. Burglary gone wrong. Listen. I'm no saint myself, but I am a man of Jesus, our savior. And if I see a sin, I promise you, it ain't going unpunished. Love and protect thy neighbor and all. Now, whoever done this must have been in a hell of a rush to get out of there. You couldn't miss the skid marks for days out front. So I take a closer look, Aspen 205. You could tell the tire had taken a bit of a beating that night already. So whoever it was, they weren't going far. The next morning, I take a hike out to my pal Tony over at Mendoza Auto Repair, and I say to him, I say, hey, Tony, why don't you keep an eye out for some out-of-state plates coming your way, okay? 
Sure enough, I get a call two days later. A guy who knows a guy was working on an 84 Camaro came in with some tire issues, license plate, two states down. <laughs> hey, when you listen to this, everyone, we got a real-life detective over here. So, Mr. Detective, do tell us what happened next, and what about the police? Shouldn't you leave your little crying fighting hobby to the real men? Well, if the police get him before I do, he's getting hauled off to state penitentiary, and that's about it. Now, that wouldn't be very fair, now, would it? The life of an innocent, good Christian woman for a couple of years in the pen? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Tell me, is that what you call true justice? <laughs> so now I got a location of the car, and boy, oh boy, things were sure getting exciting for me. After staking out a couple of days by the shop at last, I get a glimpse of the guy who came in for his ride. I got a real good look at him, too. Average looking Joe, to be honest, not too fat, not too skinny, middle-aged. Hell, I'd even say he looked somewhat respectable. One thing did stick out, though. This fella had an eye patch. You don't get too many of those now, do you? Trust me, I'm not a man to be overcome by sin. If anything, I overcome sin by good. It just so happens that good is a bit open for interpretation. Um, okay, mister, well, I think we gotta wrap things up now. We've got all the callers. I said a prayer for you. A prayer that God may have mercy on you. Reference camera is rolling. Do it, uh, time it yourself, best. Cut. 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 High five, buddy. We did it. Uh